Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we discussed that uh, how how we are planning this future videos in this playlist like uh, we are going to cover Nice.js with the different ORM tools. Okay. So before going into the details like talking about uh, Nice.js with the type ORM, Nice.js with the SQLize, Next and uh, with the Mongoose, I want to give a just a quick overview on uh, how clean Nice.js backend is. When you want to write an API backend, then Nice.js can be your choice for writing the APIs. Either it is a REST APIs or the GraphQL APIs. So these slides, I will just go through a couple of uh, things about Nice.js, and then we will start our journey. We will talk about Nice.js with the type ORM. We have already talked about that in the baseline code, but here we are talking about the type ORM, uh, different database tools. So I will cover it there. Okay, so Node.js is simple. You already know that when you want to write something in the Node.js Express, you can create a simple HTTP server in just three lines, right? What you do is require Express app.get, app.put, post, delete, and this is how you build your APIs. You will be using Express router, Express middleware, all the additional modules, cookie parser, body parser, the core modules of Node.js like FS, .NET, HTTP, and you will build nice and clean API server. But what is the difference here? First of all, you have to take care of TypeScript if you want to introduce a TypeScript with your code. And obviously TypeScript has its own advantage when we are using it for the front end or a back end project, right? So Node.js is simple, we already know. And when we want to give a simple design to the Node.js, API backend, then Nice.js is one of the nice option. I will not say like there are other frameworks out there for the API backend also like RPGS, Koa, Express, and there are a couple of more. They are also in in the same fashion. They are also simplifying the API design. But when you see how Nest.js is solving the problem of unopinated framework, because there is Express, you see the one one code uh, from your friend and you see the another uh, API backend in the express from another friend you will see the major difference people use their own structure people use their own way of writing the APIs so to avoid this and give up uniform homogeneous structure of the folders modules libraries you can see the Nest.js is one of the good option in that and it is using TypeScript and we don't need to face a lot of troubles uh, integrating TypeScript with the Express, introducing the type definitions for the Express and all. Everything is done with the help of Nest.js framework because it is already inculcating TypeScript in it. So whatever you are writing, the APIs, routers, controllers, services, you have no choice other than using TypeScript there. Okay. And when we are writing anything in the TypeScript, obviously our code is secure at the compile time I mean in safe from the bugs you can say okay and it's all about architecture using Nest.js we are able to build multiple modules like app module domain modules inside domain module you can have a user module post module auth module everything is like a modular structure because Nest.js framework is driven or inspired by the angular modular structure in angular 2.0 now we have angular 11 and all you will see the angular modules they there you have providers there you have a components services directives pipes same kind of structure you will see but for writing the api is not for the front end component but it is heavily inspired by that so if you know angular it's very easy for you to learn nest.js this is how we are writing the controllers this is how we are writing the main module same way we were writing in the angular module means it comprise of your controllers your services your providers everything can be a part of this same way we are defining angular modules in the front end where we are putting all the components all the services pipes uh, custom directives everything right and this is how your modules is defined module contains all the things your controllers your services and your data access objects or data access models okay so this is the plain simple controller looks like in the express we are doing the same thing using app.get or router.get forward slash and calling one callback functions and returning the data 
here it is saying this the controller path is gets so when you are going to launch the application you should be able to access this find all method using cats forward slash http get it will return this so everything is like typescript annotations in the background it's also executing some class because these are these are typescript annotations controller services injectable get put post delete request response all are these directly and indirectly solving lot of problems for you because if I write the authorization layer on top of routes in the express, I will be writing it differently using some custom middleware. But when it comes to Nest.js, you will follow some common semantics to write the middleware on top of the route like rows, house owner. So I wrote a custom directive, I wrote a custom guard uh, to protect this particular route. So it is giving us the homogeneous or unified uh, building blocks like in Nest.js, you can create pipes, you can create uh, controllers, uh, services, uh, you can create, uh, I mean, there are a lot of building blocks are there. So a couple of them, like you are creating DTOs, you are creating controllers, you are creating services, you are creating pipes, you are creating auth guard, you are creating validation pipes, so, and custom decorators, and many more things, right? These are services which are injectable, so it's using the same uh, IOC pattern where you are creating a services and injecting these services inside a controller so the controller should be able to get the data from services and services are getting the data from your repositories SQLize repository, type RM repository, uh, next module or Mungu's module right so services are accessing the the model object and they are providing the data to the controller controller is sending an action saying okay save this post so controller will call service, service will call repository.find.save method. This is how it works. Models. Like if you talk about the models, models are nothing but the entity class representation for your database. So we do it differently. In type or we write like this. In SQL is also there is an ESX class. In next, we just define a simple model. In Mongoose, we also define a MongoDB model. Right? So this is how we are defining the the class this is not exactly a model this is actually a validation class so whenever you are sending a request to the apis using these details we can actually validate okay id should be a uuid first name should be of min length 6 to 255 something like this so in this project we are going to use type ORM, SQLize and all. So here, this is the entity representation. Like there is a table and this is the class representation of the table in the object oriented form. Here we are writing class. This is the object ID column. All other things are annotation column. If you have done Spring Hibernate in Java, we also do the same thing. We use custom annotations and we write the class for the entities. It's like a ORM on object relational mapping. So whatever you are writing in the database, the tables, the relationships and everything, everything we are writing in form of code using ES6 classes with the helping with the help of annotations like one to one, one to many, many to many, define the join columns, annotation column, annotation entities. These are helping us to define the class a table representation in the form of code because this, this class only we are going to use to access the table from the database. And out of the box, uh, Nest.js provides a lot of things, the middleware, validations, mutations, custom logging, access re restrictions, uh, auth implementation with the help of passport and custom modules, async effect using event emitter, using uh, cron jobs and all error handling. We can write our, our own custom error handlers. Nest.js provides its own exceptions like HTTP exceptions, forbidden exceptions and uh, not found exceptions. So you don't need to handle the errors through some custom middleware. Validation pipes, it's all about request validation coming to a particular route. There we can write a joy validation, which we were doing in the express, or we can write a class validator. We can use a class validator and write a ES6 DTO class, where we can specify ID should be UUID, name should be of string, or something should be of type boolean, something like that, okay? Coming back to our main stuff, okay. So now we have already discussed all these things and this is our target. 
what we are planning is we want to cover these things nice just with the type ORM first we have already covered it but I will cover that so type ORM is a ORM right this is independent library and nest.js has a clean and nice way of integration so we are using nest.js type ORM library for this and type ORM can have integration with mysql, postgres any kind of database rdbms right so what all configurations we need we need type ORM config and for the migrations we need nest.js type ORM type ORM library is available we have already covered this so I will just directly go into the example so this is my ORM config this is my package.json here we have already written all the scripts for type ORM migration like migration revert, migration run, migration drop, migration create right all these scripts are there so when I do npm run type, type ORM migration run it actually looks inside src migrations folder and whatever is written here it will execute it like here I'm creating nodes table creating first uh, this extensions UUID extension and then creating a table if this fails I am just dropping the table right so what we will do is first one by one we will go through these three examples postgres uh, I mean nice.js with the type ORM, nice.js with the sequelize, nice.js with the next and then nice.js with the mongoose here what you need to do in all these projects there is a docker compose file so when you do docker compose up postgres container will spin up I mean you can use mysql also it's the same thing I don't want it to create a multiple docker containers and all so the same docker compose file is everywhere in the folder so when you do docker compose up postgres containers will come up and then we can connect to the postgres using this connection url right localhost 5434 starter api okay let's see that in the next video thanks everyone